Now, despite the reputation of Steven Seagal today, and regardless of him tarnishing his legacy for just being a crappy guy overall, nobody in the history of cinema splashed onto the action scene like he did. Seagal burst into Hollywood with a string of five films that to this day managed to keep him cemented as a true action icon. One of them was 1990's Mark for Death, a film filled with voodoo and broken limbs and a ridiculous dragon jacket and some of Seagal's best on-screen actions. So let's dive into it. What's up, everybody? Thank you for stopping by the channel. I'm Anthony DeJoya. This is Movies Never Say Die. If you do like this video at the end, consider hitting the like button. If you like this content, hit the subscribe button to catch all my new 80s and 90s content. Now, I grew up on a steady diet of action movies on cable during those decades. Schwarzenegger and Stallone ruled the 80s. The 90s would bring a new wave of action stars like Van Damme and Snipes and Gibson and Willis. And I loved all these guys and I rewatched their movies countless times after school and on the weekends when most kids were watching Disney movies. Then came Steven Seagal, really out of nowhere. All of these other guys had had smaller parts in movies before graduating up to the A-list. Most of these guys outside of Willis were also pretty much physically cut, uh, some totally jacked. They felt larger than life with their physiques, but Seagal just kind of looked like a normal guy. He rocked a ponytail, he ran all goofy, and he kicked absolute ass. The first movie for me was actually his second, Hard to Kill, which came out in the same year as Marked for Death. It was a brutal action flick with weird sciences, Kelly LeBrock and Seagal's wife at the time as his co-star. I loved it. I thought uh, Seagal's revenge mission was epic, but it also uh, felt grittier and more realistic than some of the other actioners coming out at that time. I ended up seeing Marked for Death on VHS for the first time, and I loved it as well. Seagal was unconventional. His fighting style was unique, uh, explosive, really. And up until this point, you really hadn't seen that type of fighting on screen. Uh, Seagal's first two movies, Above the Law in 88 and Hard to Kill, in 90 were Warner Brothers movies and Seagal had signed a multi-picture deal with the studio. For his second film, Hard to Kill, Seagal actually wanted director Dwight Little, but he was denied. There was, however, a clause in his contract that allowed him to branch out to make a movie with another studio. Uh, Seagal really did want to work with Little, so he exercised that option. He would go over to 20th Century Fox to shoot Mark for Death on the condition that Little could be the director. Which I think was a good decision because in the terms of Mark for Death, it's one of Seagal's most well-rounded action movies and it's because Little knew that with Seagal's fast fighting style that doesn't have a lot of kicking and punching that adding more car chases and more explosions and a hefty amount of gunplay would provide a lot of much needed variety and he was right. So what else is now, the plot for Marked for Death is a relatively straightforward storyline for the typical action movie that was released during this time. Uh, Seagal plays a recently retired DEA agent who returns to his small hometown in suburban Chicago for some peace, only to find that the drug trade has infested Middle America as Jamaican posses led by a man named Screwface stake claim to the neighborhood as their turf. This, of course, ignites Seagal and his old buddy, played by Keith David, in a battle for control. So as you can see, it's pretty tried and true. The original script was written by Michael Grace and Mark Victor. It was originally to be titled Screwface, and despite having the same story structure and characters, it was actually much different than the final film due to a lot of changes made by Seagal, who was uh, at this time only in his third film, but already seeming to feel himself a bit too much. Seagal would go on to attempt to take credit for coming up with and writing the entire story, and he wanted writing credits. This would actually result in a labor dispute case that was taken before the Writers Guild of America. Seagal claimed to have written 93% of the original draft. The Writers Guild would, of course, sided with Grace and Victor after looking the case over, and they do remain as the only credited writers for Marked for Death, and rightfully so, because it really is their script. The focal idea for Marked for Death actually came from Michael Grace when he 
read a news story about Jamaican gangs taking over the American suburbs at the time, Grace and Victor would actually do ride-alongs with the LAPD to learn more about these Jamaican gangs. This is when uh, they were talking with officers and learning more about the involvement of voodoo and black magic in certain cases. And it's been reported that Grace and Victor also met with one of the biggest drug dealers in Jamaica, which, to be honest, I'm not so sure I believe, but it was the early 90s and it was a much simpler time. So who knows, really? The National Coalition of TV Violence certainly knew something, though. They knew it was a violent movie, and they would deem Marked for Death to be one of the most violent movies of 1990. This movie actually had to have some of the graphic death scenes trimmed out and cut down dramatically to get that R rating, and you can kind of notice some weird cuts during the action, which is unfortunate because I guess the Charles Bronson style of ultra-violent grindhouse action movies were kind of a dying breed in the late 80s and into the 90s. 90s as cinema and home entertainment really would explode, I guess. But regardless, there's still plenty of fun, violent action to enjoy in this movie. There's broken bones, limbs getting chopped off. Seagal and David are a great duo. I love anything Keith David is in. He really does hold his own alongside Seagal here as they take on drug dealers. The story is easy moving and enough to connect all the action together, which is really all you need outside of a great villain. Something that Mark for Death also has with Basil Wallace's delight Delightfully sadistic performance as Screwface. I want what I did. I want his family dead. And if you can't kill him, I go kill him. And then I go kill you. Marked for Death just shoots fast out of the gate in between Seagal delivering tough guy dialogue and all the violent gunplay and fight sequences. The movie never takes its foot off the gas. Marked for Death also delivers Seagal kicking ass, delivering macho dialogue, full on running, as well as some partial nudity all in the first five minutes. So this is definitely one of those early 90s movies that certainly has a cheesy 80s genre vibe to it. Now, only a few days into shooting March for Death, Seagal's other film at the time, Hard to Kill, was released in theaters, and it was absolutely crushing it at the box office. 20th Century Fox took notice and immediately expanded the budget of March for Death by $1 million. This would uh, bring the budget up to $12 million, and it would certainly pay off. Uh, March for Death would drop in theaters in October of 1990, and it would open at number one at the box office with more than $11.7 million. This would be Seagal's second straight flick behind behind Hard to Kill to open number one at the box office. It would hold the number one spot for three straight weeks and finish with a hefty worldwide total of $58 million. And like many action movies from the era, I have zero doubt that Mark for Death did huge numbers on VH sales and rentals. And I actually think Seagal delivers some of his best action in Mark for Death. He actually gets hit in this movie a few times, which was on purpose. Uh, Seagal up until this point was able to maneuver having his characters not get hit, uh, something that Warner Brothers would oblige to. However, 20th Century Fox was not having that at all. That's why you can see Seagal's character taking a few hits and losing the upper hand at times. And that's something that I think you actually kind of need just to make it all feel a little bit more realistic. But again, it definitely does call to Seagal's already inflating ego at the time. Another caveat from Seagal was being able to wear his snazzy dragon jacket. It doesn't fit his character at all. It has dragons on the front and an odd tiger on the back with a face that sort of looks like a monkey. I mean, I don't know. To me, the jacket just looks like a knockoff version of a designer jacket, but Seagal loved it and insisted on wearing it in parts of the film. He looks pretty dumb, but it also does sort of add to the overall weirdness of Marked for Death. And for some of the jackets he would wear in future films, it's actually not that bad. I mean, Marked for Death is just one of those weird movies. It's filled with themes of voodoo and black magic with ritualistic killings and cow tongues hung on doors. It's really dark in themes, which of course adds to the just mystique of Screwface and his posse. And that's what you want in an action movie. Some added intimidation to the villains Seagal and David will go against. I also really do like the chemistry between Seagal and David in this movie. They're perfect for their characters, and I think they work surprisingly well together. But when all is said and done, Mark for Death is one of the last timestamp films to the era of 80s action with fast moving flicks with cheesy dialogue and surface level motivations in a cinematic world where Jamaican posses and Colombian drug dealers have shootouts and pizza parlors with car chases in the park and the occasional shopping mall sword fight. A 
world loose with the nudity and overtly clear with exposition and no shortage of explosions. Marked for Death delivers it all, and I'll give it a solid A-. And that's it for today, guys. This has been my look back at 1990s Marked for Death. It's easily top five Seagal, possibly top three, but a nostalgic ride of silliness nonetheless. Let me know what you guys think of this movie down in the comments if you've seen it. If not, certainly add it to your watch list if you're looking to build up your 90s action movie viewing resume. Thanks for watching as always, guys. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And until the next one, movies never say die. This is Jack Burton and the Pork Shop Express, and I'm talking to whoever's listening out there. Survive the a war. You gotta become war. I suppose we have to register you as a lethal weapon. You trying to say Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball?